Hey, what's up guys? It's Kevin. Uh, many of you may know me as the Market Bishop on Discord. It's definitely been a while since I posted on YouTube, but I wanted to come back and share something that I thought was important. So recently I posted on Twitter asking you guys what you thought holds you back from being profitable in trading. And luckily a lot of you guys posted in the comments over here on this post and I was able to see what you guys thought were your main issues. And believe it or not, you guys are not really alone, right? Most of these issues I faced myself in the beginning. Uh, a lot of other people, just like yourselves, have faced it as well. So I thought the best way to address it, briefly at least for now, is to make a corny little uh, presentation over here. So that's what we're going to go over. The whole video today is just going to be based on why I think many people on at least Discord and even retail traders are not really that profitable when it comes to trading, right? Made by yours truly, uh, the Market Bishop. So I got a list of, I think, uh, 17 problems on here. So I'm just going to go over each one briefly. And in the coming days, I'll look to go a little deeper into topics like uh, sizing, you know, personal sizing and so on. But all right, what do I think is the first problem? The One of the biggest problems I, uh, I see a lot, people having false expectations. Uh, what do I mean by that? I put over here that it means keeping unrealistic goals on what trading can be for you. And uh, I see a lot of... Uh, you know, influencers, trading influencers like on Twitter, on YouTube, on Discord, you know, they, they've probably made really good success from this and they push it out there that you can be rich and you could do this, yada, yada, yada. I mean, of course, yeah, you know, that's true. You can do that. But is that going to be the case for everybody? Realistically, I don't think so. Right. So having an unrealistic goal of what trading can be for you can honestly, in my opinion, you know, kind of take you down a greedy path or a, you know a path you don't want to be in when you're trading uh, I see some people who want to quote unquote become rich quick right and uh, which kind of leads into my second point and that kind of leads to people taking trades that make no sense or they, they rush into trades so have truthful expectations of what trading can be for you problem two income over growth uh, a lot of uh, many many new traders and I mean I see this all the time they see like they get into trading because they want it as a source of income and it can be right realistically it can be but i personally think in the beginning you know in the beginning of, of your trading journey you're gonna have a lot of hiccups and through those hiccups your main focus would want to be growth right growth of your account a growth of your uh knowledge right your education your your risk tolerance your risk management it's not supposed to be income right because if you have your priority as income over growth at first you're going to keep on going over you're going to most likely find yourself going after bad trades bad setups you know bad habits so keep that in mind uh, problem number three being a sheep uh, what i mean by that is following people you know all these platforms like of course you can have inspirations and motivational people but make sure you keep it realistic right uh, i guess you could say this whole slide is about being realistic if you follow people who keep on uh, showing off their riches, you know, their lifestyle, their trading lifestyle, it's not necessarily wrong doing on their part, but don't just try to follow what they're doing just because they're, they want to show off how they live, right? Know that each and every person has a different lifestyle and their brains interpret and perceive things in different ways. So try to make trading fit into your lifestyle, fit into the person you are and stop trying to chase who other people are, right? Maybe the way I trade or the way I live is not necessarily the greatest way you can live or you can trade. The, one of the, thing, the greatest things about trading is it kind of gives you a better, uh, you know, a deeper look into who you are, you are as a person. Problem number four, not understanding the basics. I cannot tell you how many people I see always having this problem. Instead of taking the time to learn the boring things, and by boring, I mean, you know, price action, trends, patterns, you know, all those kind of things, right? Kind of the trading 101. They want to skip that because they feel like they have a good quote unquote understanding of it. But in reality, they don't. They think that looking at a chart, you know, for a few minutes or a few hours and trying to kind of figure out for yourself works, but the truth is it doesn't. You can't go into trading think you know it, thinking you knowing everything, thinking you know everything. Right. That's a great thing about the market. It humbles you. 
even after how long I've been trading, there's a lot of times when I learn new things, right? And I, I got to keep my mind open because even if you know so much, the way the market trades and the way the market moves constantly changes. And what you might see three years ago might not be the same thing now. So before going on to even more complicated things like, you know, some people like going into like indicators and different types of indicators, I would say one of the most important things is actually understand the basics. Uh, I personally use price action trends and patterns and nailing those three things down an early stage for me helped me out. Right. Problem number five. You guys have probably all heard this uh, emotional trading, uh, allowing emotions to get into trades. Uh, what I mean by this is greed, fear, um, FOMO, which means fear of missing out. Right. All these things can lead you into getting into poor setups or entering when you shouldn't enter. It kind of defeats logic and goes into more of uh, feeding that, you know, like that second, I don't know, the voice or what do you want to say, right? Like if, if, for example, I see Tesla popping up out of nowhere, the wrong thing to do if I haven't even plotted or looked at anything on the chart is by just being like, oh my God, I can't, I'm going to miss out on this. I got to get into calls, right? Second you get into calls, you know, of course, you know, it might work, but there's a good chance it might not, right? It could easily reverse on you. So keeping emotions in check is a lot easier said than done. Uh, some people, for some people, it's very easy. For some people, it's very hard, but it's definitely something you want to look into. Problem number six, no proper risk management. I see this so many times on Discord, and I really can't blame somebody for not having proper risk management because... Unfortunately, it's not really taught as much or, or reminded by people who have big platforms or big followings on Discord, Twitter, and YouTube. You do want to per figure out your personal risk management. And I said here over here, your personal risk management, because I want to make sure you know that, for example, my personal risk management and the way I trade is not probably, you know, might not always work out for you exactly, right? Your risk management, your risk tolerance could be a lot different than mine or it could be similar. So the way you can, the way I always said that I would look at risk management, right? Or how to figure it out is you look at multiple factors, right? You look at uh, the size of your portfolio. If the amount in your portfolio, if you were to, God forbid, lose all of it, right? One day, would that financially hurt you, right? Then you got to also look at your income. Are you having a steady income? Is this just like, are you very young and then you have like $500 and you just want to put that in there in your trading account and try trading? Obviously, after you lose it, what are you going to be left with, right? Um, you got like, to look at income, your portfolio size, you know, who you are as a person. Are you a, a guy who likes taking risk? Are you a guy who likes being a little passive, right? Neither of those are wrong. Me personally, I'm a risky guy. Uh, not saying what I mean by risky is I don't take like bad setups, but I take um, I take high probability, high risk uh, setups. It's personally worked for me because I've learned uh, I've managed to learn how to uh, do that effectively. But that might not be the way you work. I know some people who are very passive traders. They wait for multiple confirmations and they want to enter up went enter after so many confirmations. And yeah, they might get a little less profits, right? But their risk is a lot less. So figure out, you would want to figure out what your personal risk management is. All right. Problem number seven. You guys can see all oh, my slides are so fancy looking. But uh, problem number seven, over -le leveraging. This applies to, this can apply to almost anything, right? Uh, I don't trade crypto, but I do trade options. Options is what I love trading. And I do also trade futures. So it can apply to all of these, right? Um, let's just stick for options because I'm pretty sure most of my following is uh, trading options. But if you have, let's just say, a $2,000 portfolio, you can't be going into, well, like, you can, but it's it's best, it's probably not best to go into one trade with like $1,000, right? That's like half of your portfolio right there. If you, God forbid, if that trade goes to zero, like if you can't just manage it properly or for some reason it just it just doesn't go your way, that is half of your portfolio already gone, right? So you want to make sure you get a, you had you had to sit down figure out how much you can put you would want to put into each trade problem number eight lack of patience uh this kind of is related to emotional trading right 
uh, fear of missing out. Sometimes, you know, uh, I've come to realize this over the years. There's a lot of days where there's setups that come out right away, you know, like one, two, three, you know, you find them every 15 minutes, you'll find setups. And there's days where you will not find a setup like three hours in, four hours into the market, and you might find on the fifth hour. So if there's some, is there, if there's not a setup you like, right, don't take it. You know, why risk, why risk trading that setup? You could, this is a thing, right, for options especially, you can take a trade that has a bad setup and it could go your way, but sometimes you're going to have bad price action and so on that your contracts are not really going to give you much profits, right? So try to look for setups that you are used to and you know have worked for you most of the times in the past, right? That's what I would do. Problem number nine, uh, incorrect starting capital. Starting off with too little or too much. I can't stress how much I've seen uh, people go through this mistake, right? Uh, you know, uh, we all would love to just start off with 500 or $300 and take it to, you know, 10000 100000 however, right? We all want to start off with too little and become like the underdogs who take it to a big portfolio. But realistically, the chances of that happening, at least in early stage, is pretty low, right? And a lot of people, you know, who are gifted or blessed with a bigger capital before they come into trading, they put a lot into their account, right? And they lose a lot of money. I've seen a lot of people who have like, who start trading with like six figure accounts. And yeah, they can, you know, they could risk to lose it, but they end up losing so much of it because they're still learning over time. And that's just so much money lost, right? So you want to, if you're starting off, uh, I would say the best thing is to just start off with the the middle ground, right? Um, if you if you have if you have a decent amount you can put into trading, maybe you want to just put in, you know, like five thousand dollars or something like that, and just start from there. You know, learn from your mistakes, and once you start getting a better grasp, maybe you can try to uh, size up your portfolio. When it comes to little accounts, that's a kind of tough part because obviously, you know, it's logical that. The smaller your account size, the less room you have for error. So, you know, it, it, unfortunate as it is, the sad truth is the market are not for those who are just struggling, right? It's for those who are patient enough to attack the market at the right time. Uh, that's what I think. And, you know, I feel for the people out there who, who want to get into trading to get out of, you know, financial messes and everything that they're in. But realistically, that's that's not always going to happen, right? And you eventually that could be the case. I can't say that's going to be the case for everybody. I can't say anything, right? But maybe that could be the case. But it's always better to, to have a better chance at it. You want to have more knowledge, right? More experience. So there's always other options. Like there's paper trading, right? Uh, for those who have low capital, maybe you could get into futures trading and there's uh, things called prop firms. I know there's they're under a little bit of scrutiny right now, but uh, prop firms sometimes give you a cheaper alternative, right, compared to option trading. So maybe that's uh, maybe that's something you could look at. So it, it, this is just a brief thing. So, it, you know, you could always take your time to think about different solutions for your sit personal situation. Problem number 10. Uh over reliance, depending too much on indicators, algos, and quote unquote, and analysts, right? Or I don't like using the words analysts because no one's really licensed in trading on Discord, like me. I'm not licensed, right? We're not financial advisors. So you could just say traders on Discord, right? Um, what do I mean by this? I cannot, I cannot emphasize how many people have tried um, just sticking to using algos and indicators that people make and, you know, I'm not saying they're bad. A lot of them are good. Some of them are good. But you have to understand, like some algos and some indicators, all they do is they take basic stuff. They just take basic indicators like VWAP, MACD, RSI, you know, EMAs, MAs, SMAs, whatever. You know, they take all these things and they just put it together in one thing. And, you know, that's how, that's how the algos work or that's how some indicators work. And when it comes to, you know, when it comes to that, of course, it can work for you, but how much noise do you want on your screen? You know, these, you think of the way you want to trade and, it, and that leads into problem 11. You know, 
you want to trade like uh, an institution or a banker or market maker, whatever you guys want to call them, right? You want to trade like them, and they don't have, they of course have algos and stuff like that, but they don't have all these, you know, 12,000 indicators on their screen or five algos on their screen and stuff like that, you know? So maybe just simplify it, you know, reduce what you have on the screen and try to just understand the core stuff, you know, price, trend analysis, volume analysis, patterns, you know, that, that, that could possibly take you a long way. Also, I put in like a quote unquote analyst or, you know, traders on discord or on, or on Twitter. They, I think I'm going to speak more on discord cause I've been on discord for a long time. I think the best way you can utilize traders on discord is not by always following following, you know, just using them for their trade ideas. I think it's more looking at their trade ideas and yeah, you can enter in with them so you could kind of make profit while you go, right? There's a possibility of that, but it's also looking why, looking at why they're entering, right? I personally put out, I try to put out my charts out there when I, before I enter or when I enter, so it allows people to look at my chart and try to figure out what I'm looking at. Cause of course I don't have time to, uh, not trying to be mean, but I don't have time to enter my own trade, take a screen, download a picture of the chart, you know, post it while also putting a message of why I'm entering. Right. So I just at least try to put a chart out there and see if you guys could figure it out. At least it's better than nothing. Right. So if other traders don't do that, then, you know, go onto the chart, like go onto the chart, you know, go on to, let's say if someone puts a Tesla trade idea out, go on to Tesla, look at the exact time they entered, try to see like 15 minutes or an hour before that leading up to that point and see why they're trying to enter. Is there a trend line? It's it, it broke or, is trying to test is there a pattern you know there, these are stuff you want to learn yourself and that's why i say you don't want to over rely because there's so many people who just follow you know traders on discord like me and that's not a bad thing but you're how are you going to learn from that i know my personal ambition like i'm going to be on discord but do i need to be on discord no you know it's what i want at this point it's not what i need at all whatsoever at a certain point years from now, you know, I might not be on Discord or the people you guys follow are not going to be on Discord. So you want to learn yourself, right? Uh, that's how I, that's, you know, that's how I would go upon trading the market. Problem number 11, not knowing market of manipulation. Being aware of how firms manipulate the market or banks, whatever you want to call it, is really de detrimental to your, uh, I would say, to your trading progress. Institutions, banks, I don't know what uh, people now the, what's it called? The ICT guys call them market movers or whatever. <laughs> um, they, they make the most money when they manipulate retail traders into thinking one thing and then stopping them out and then, you know, just going the way they want to, right? They make the most money out of manipulating retail traders. That's how they make their money. So you want to figure out what you want to try to get a, understanding of how institutions trade right and the way you could do that is by looking at price and you could see what they try doing and how these you know how they trade and that could kind of give you a a little like I, I guess you could say a third voice for entering a trade like you like sometimes you could see uh i don't know why i'm using tesla so much uh probably because i've had so much success with it but Let's just say Tesla, right, breaks below a weekly level at, uh, you know, whatever price. And you're seeing a break below. And you, right in your head, like, your fingers snap and you're like, oh, my God, I got to enter the puts, right? But then the thing is, you will have that third voice if you kind of figure out what market manipulation is. And you, you realize, like, hold on, wait, you know, the, the first of all, the candle didn't really close below that level, right? On top of that. Uh, let's just say the day has been bullish, right, or something like that. I don't know, whatever. You just try to think of the scenario and think of, wait, hold on. Is it possible that this is a potential bear trap, right? Because how many times have you seen Tesla or any other stock break below a level that you thought is so strong? You're like, oh my goodness, I got to get into this because if it's breaking below this, it's going to freaking go all the way to zero dollars, right? And you get into these puts and then you know, wada wada boom, you know, they, it goes against you. And uh, it just, you know, it either it, it, sometimes it even closes below the level and it still retraces right back up above the level and continues its bear, a bullish trend, right? So try to get a grasp of that. Uh, 
I know I don't have a lot of uh, videos on market manipulation, but there might be some other videos out there. But I would say my personal experience, the way I got a grasp of it is by looking at price action, by looking at history of price action. What I mean is by looking at, you know, previous days on stocks and stuff like that and see how how the stock would be when it reaches a price level. If it tries breaking below it, what it does, you know, does it actually stay below and keep on breaking down? You know, so on, so on. Problem number 12, lack of proper record keeping. Not taking the time to keep record of your trades. This is very important. You guys know for a fact that I have a trading log, right? And that really helps me. Like personally for me, uh, keeping uh, track of my trades uh, has really helped me try to get a deeper understanding of what tickers work for me, right? Or, uh, you know, what kind of contracts work for me. For example, like, um, I forgot what it was, but whoops, my bad. I think uh, this month or last month, I had a low success rate with BABA, right? And I didn't even know that until I went back in my trading log and I saw, you know, even though I had a pretty decent month this month, you know, in September and a really great month in uh, August, right? I realized that BABA was one of my least uh, performing tickers. So now I know to uh, stay away from it because honestly, uh, you know, before... Before the past two months, Baba used to be one of my most uh, successful tickers, right? And now Baba became one of my least, and Tesla became one of my best, uh, uh, my most successful tickers that I trade on. So, keeping uh, proper record keeping of uh, your trades can lead you to get a better understanding of how you trade and probably a, in a little insight on what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. Problem number 13. Incorrect trading platform. Uh, <laughs> this is funny because if you guys know me, you guys know my, uh, you guys know my, my very strong feelings towards trading platforms like Robinhood, right? Maybe it's gotten better since the last time I used it, which was like a while ago. Uh, now I only use it for credit spreads, and the only reason I use it for credit spreads is because you don't need, uh, you know, good fill times really, but. Platforms like Robinhood can really cause you to miss out on trades or give you bad fills. And that can help hurt you a lot of times, right? So you want to get a better understanding what trading platforms are out there. I personally like Thinkorswim. Uh, and I think Thinkorswim mm -hmm. is now moving on to Schwab or something like that. So definitely, you know, get a, get a good understanding of what the trading platforms are out there. Don't just go with what looks easy, right? Robinhood, a lot of people use it, and I'm not going to blame you, you know, it does look appealing to use, it has a nice user interface, but the only reason you want, might want to use it is because it has a good user interface, it's very simple, and it quotes that it has zero commission. Okay, but, you know, if something is portrayed as free, that does not mean it's the greatest thing out there, right? Then you got Weeble, you know, Weeble, Weeble is kind of like a, I got a mixed opinions on it, I could say. It says, I think it says no commissions. I might be wrong, but there's like very tiny commission it charges you. It's kind of really, uh, you can't really, you won't really notice it. But the fill times on there are really greatest. Uh, not that I've seen. So I like trading platform. Ah, oh, jeez, I like trading platforms like Thinkorswim. E Trade's really good. Uh, what else? Um, those are only two I could think of on the top of my head. But I really love Thinkorswim. That's what I've been with. I'm not sponsored by them at all whatsoever. They don't even know I exist. Uh, but okay, problem number 14, lack of diversi diversification. All right, what I mean by that? Only looking at one or two tickers. I cannot believe how many people are in love with SPY. And I get you. You know, I get why you love SPY. I used to love SPY at one moment too. But you know what I learned with SPY? Sometimes it's not the greatest thing to trade because, you know, the, all these tickers are moving one way and the tickers move another way. What does that do? That makes SPY become a little choppy throughout the day. So you don't want to just be looking at SPY, right? You want to be looking at a different other, a bunch of tickers. Not a bunch, but just a focused group, right? What you want to do is, you want, uh, what I would do, right? What I would do is I would look at tickers that have high volume. What I mean by high volume are like blue chip stocks, right? You know, Apple, NVIDIA, Tesla, AMD, Baba, so on and so on. Things that that where you know, if you were to trade the options, their option chain, there will be a lot of volume behind it, right? So, 
you know, look at look at these charts. See see which tic tickers you like trading. You know, some tickers like Disney, for example, uh, they go they trade very well with levels. At least that's what it's been doing the past few weeks. Uh, some other tickers respect more to trend lines, right? I think uh, Tesla's one of them. Uh, so, you know, there's QQQ, you know, there's a NASDAQ, which I personally like trading a lot more than the S&P 500, right? Which is ES and SPY. I don't know if you, a lot of people remember me from a few years ago. I used to be the guy who used to trade SPY almost all the time. SPY, SPX, I still do now. Um, but I kind of shifted from SPY and ES towards NQ, which is NASDAQ or QQQ, right? So I found that their uh, QQQ is a lot more directional. Right. Uh, compared to uh, spy, you can even look and see that, you know, there, it's a little bit more directional. And yes, you know, the QQQ my contracts might be just a tad bit a little more expensive than the spy contracts. But what are you really trying to get here? You know, are you trying to get just cheap contracts or are you trying to actually look to make a profit? Not saying that QQQ will give you profits compared to spy, but that was just my uh, experience in two cents on it. Problem number 15, lack of continuous learning. Just like it is with the religion, it's just like it is with trading. You know, you can't just go, you know, you can't be religious and not try to learn more about your religion. You know, it's, it's similar to trading. You can't just be a novice or even a good trader and not want to learn more about what you're trading, right? You want to look at news. You want to look at, learn, you know, what's going on with the market. You know, constantly the, the way the market trades changes. You know, the way we're trading right now is a lot different than it was four or five years ago, right? Uh, I could definitely tell you it's a lot, it was a lot different. So uh, price action is more volatile now. So you want to learn more, you know, you want to see what you, you want to see what exactly is out there that sticks to the core base, uh, core, you know, core fundamentals, right? I'm not saying get to go learn stuff like uh, ICT, for example. I, don't, I see ICT money concepts or whatever it is. I personally don't believe in that stuff. I think it's just a bunch of Sorry if this offends anybody. This is my just opinion, right? I'm allowed to have opinions. So I think it's just a bunch, of a bunch of shenanigans where it takes all of these common words that are you have been used for trading for years on end and they just give it fancy words to make it look like they have an edge over retail traders. The truth is a lot of these things are just, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of fluff fluff, you know? Bushy bushy is is just there to look cool or d there to make you think that you're smart. But I could tell you from personal experience, I found a perfect perfectly fine not looking at what words and terms uh, I see two traders or whatever they want you want to call them use, and just looking at what the retail the old not retail the old traders use right like support resistance demand supply zones um, rally based rally consolidation zones uh, what was the other thing accumulation zones you know these are all terms that have been there for years decades right and those are the main things and they're still used these days but you know people want to look fancy you know good on them you know then maybe they found an edge on the edge over the market that works for them but it's not going to be the same for everybody right so continue learning uh all right problem number 16 not knowing when you're wrong this is probably obvious to you. There's a lot of times where you get into a trade and you hope that something will happen instead of seeing what's on the chart. You want to stop trading with feelings. You want to stop trading with, I think this is going to happen. Look what's in front of you. If you're getting into, if you trade, a, if you get into calls and a, and the chart, your, your trade gets invalidated, meaning your, your chart is looking bearish. What's the logic behind him being those calls, right? You need to have, if your trade looks invalidated, you need to have, you would need to have a good reason to stay into those calls, right? Because it's like, it's like crossing the road and seeing a car coming at you and you thinking, okay, I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to hope that car swerves around me, even though it's going 100 miles per hour, right? You're the one who's staying in the middle of the road <laughs> and just standing there looking at the car when you could might as well be like, okay, I kind of got to move out of the way. Just go, right? So I know it's a bad example, but I hope you get what I mean. Problem number 17, not letting your runners run. Um, this is a little tricky, right? It, problem 16 and 17 is a little tricky because if you guys know the way I trade, I trade based on trade invalidation. So I exit trades only when it's invalidated 
and I hold my runners until my trade is invalidated as well. But uh, especially September, you guys know September is not the greatest months to trade. Price action is wonky. And the option prices don't move as much. So, for example, like I, like um, August, I used to have amazing trades that would run like 100%, 300%. You know, no, no difficulty. But not saying that doesn't happen now, but there's a lot less of it, right? Uh, there's a lot of more sideways trading. The options just don't go as far as they used to. So you want to kind of think about how you would want to trim out your contracts, right? Or when you want to let your runners run, when you want to trim, right? Because you don't want to just be the guy who holds on to his losing trades for a long time and somehow let it gets into the green or gets out with a huge loss and then just exit at like 10%, you know, your next trade. Just because it was 10%, you're like, oh my God, it's green. So you definitely want to know when to let your runners run and know when to trim, know when to exit, you know, know when you're wrong. And a lot of these things are based on the chart. You know, sometimes, sometimes you could see a really good setup. This is what happened to me in September all the time. You can see a really good setup and and your contracts will start going in the green. Now we're like 1%, 2%, and it'll reach 5%, and 8%. And you're like, oh my gosh, my setup is working. But then all of a sudden your trade gets invalidated, right? It might go up to like 12%, but then... What you were hoping for, like let's say you were hoping for a big green candle, it didn't happen, right? And then you look at the chart and you're like, okay, you know what? This just happened. I got a rejection at this level and that rejection is not really a good thing for my position. So unfortunately, I need to exit out. Let's just say 6% profit. Well, there you go. You know, you have your answer right there. Most of the times in my experience, the chart can give a lot of answers to your question, right? And it helps you remove emotion out of it. And sometimes you got to put on your actual glasses and look on your screen and think and not even think, just see what's there. And if you actually see what's there, you'll see if you're wrong or if you're right. And if you're right, you want to let your runners run. If you're wrong, you want to trim or you want to exit, right? So keep that in mind. Um, but I think that's all the problems I had on mine. But um, this was supposed to be brief. I think this has been running for uh, about like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. But this is just a brief thing, as I was saying. Uh, these topics, I could go a little more in depth about them, and I wouldn't, I won't mind doing that. It's a lot hectic because uh, I don't always have time, as of late. But it's always a pleasure to talk about these things because, you know, it, it seems like a lot of work at first, but then I start talking about it, and I realize I've been talking about twenty, uh, talking about it for twenty minutes, right? So uh, trading is an obsession of mine. It's something I genuinely love. Uh, it's an addiction at this point. And if you guys have any questions, you can always feel free to reach me, reach out to me on Discord. Uh, my Discord, if you guys already don't know, my username is the Market Bishop. Right? Make sure it's this username right here. I don't have any periods or anything like that. It's just the Market Bishop. Right? Feel free to send me a friend request or um, a message. Right, and I, whenever I get the time, I will respond. Uh, keep in mind, I get a bunch of messages each day, so you know I might not be able to respond right away. So, but I always try to uh, respond back. If you guys don't already follow me on Twitter, uh, if you guys don't know, I'm very popular on Twitter. Two thousand freaking followers. I'm playing, but uh, feel free to follow me on there. Uh, but enough of me talking. You guys have a nice night or nice day. Uh, thank you for even listening to me if you already reached this far. And I uh, hope to bring out more content to you guys and have a nice day. Thank you.